Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, lift your voice and thank the Lord. Thank him for the victory, Lord. Thank him for the victory. Thank him for salvation. Thank him for healing. Thank him, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the victory that you gave to us. Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank you for the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. Thank God. Thank God Almighty. You have saved us. You have delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of your dear son Jesus who is sufficient for these things. Only God Almighty. Thank you for being our sufficiency. Thank you that in you we have life. And life is a way more abundantly. We lift our hearts and our hands and we say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For you are good and your mercy endure forever. Thank you for the victory of the cross. Thank you for the victory of the cross of Jesus. For it is written, if the princes of this world had known that in crucifying Jesus, the Lord of glory, we would be free, they would never have done it. So we are free. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let your voice somebody and give the Lord praise for the victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. God bless you. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. There's such a spirit, wonderful spirit of joy here today. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, on this good note of joy because of the victory that the Lord has given to us, I want to begin today's message on God's joyful mission to the nations. Hallelujah. Yes. God's joyful mission to the nations. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I ask that you give us insight, wisdom, and revelation in the knowledge of you in Jesus' name. Let this word live mightily in us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Confirm your word with signs and wonders following in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fulfill the work of faith by your power, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus name. Thank you that you so loved us that you sent Jesus. It was your joy. It was your pleasure. We thank you that through him we are saved. For this, Lord, we are grateful to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come with me to Isaiah chapter 53, please. God's joyful mission to the nations. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to know today, for those who know it, be established in the, in the revelation and be reminded of it and be established in it, those who don't know, to come to know this, that God rejoices over you 
with singing. Hallelujah. God delights in us. Hallelujah. When God gave us Jesus, he did not do it grudgingly. Amen. He did it joyfully. Hallelujah. He did it joyfully. You know, people can do things for you in this world and do it grudgingly. And sometimes things are done in this world because the powers that be are forced to do it. Sometimes, uh, because of public opinion, occasionally in the history of the world has even been, say, uh, the uprising of the masses. The people have just rebelled against the status quo, and the powers that be are just simply forced to do what the people are demanding. Meaning that they don't do it joyfully, uh, but they are forced to do it. Since we live in America, I'll just give you a little bit of history, just to make my point. America has a history of a civil rights movement, and the breakthroughs that came out of that, uh, they were not uh, implemented and enacted joyfully. The powers that be were forced to do it. All people are not, are not allowed to vote in America, uh, but when that changed, it changed not because the powers that be wanted that. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. Right. So things can be done or changed out of joy or gradually. God came to save us out of joy. Amen. You understand that? God reaches out to you to save you and to help you because it is his pleasure. He delights in humanity. God is not mad at you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's important that you know that if you don't, and if you do know it, it's important that you establish in it. You remind yourself of this. God loves me. It is God's delight to save, to heal, to deliver me, to do more than I ask him for. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is God's delight to do more than you ask him for. Amen. Amen. When you understand these things, it changes your prayer life. Because when you pray, you pray with an expectation. And the expectation of the righteous does not get cut off nor delayed. It comes to pass, and it comes to pass exceeding abundantly above what they asked for. Amen. Wow. Yes. Yes. God says, ask him. But when you ask him, he does not give to you based on what you ask or how you ask. God gives to us exceeding abundantly above all that we ask for, above all that we dream about. So that means God is not giving you in the measure to which you ask. Because if he gave you, if it was given to you in the measure to which you ask, then you give, he will not be giving to you exceedingly abundantly above what you ask for. Do you see that? That is a being who delights in your joy. He delights in your happiness. You understand that? I don't know about you, but when I was a little, when I was a little boy, uh, and I don't know who taught me that or how I got it, but somehow, you know, I, you know, I just used to think that God was like an old, very old man <laughs> with a, a white beard. You know, and he had this rod, like the rod of Moses, or some rod he gave to some guy called Moses. And uh, God, you know, would judge you. I, I, I heard more about 
God as a child. I don't know about your experience, but yeah. it was like, don't mess with him. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. And uh, he was writing down all my deeds, the good and the bad. Unfortunately for me, the bad seemed to outweigh the good. <laughs> And it just made me afraid that I was not pleasing him. And because of that, I might not make it, make it to heaven, make it in his book, make whatever it was that was the standard. Mm -hmm. I I just was always falling short of it. Mm -hmm. Until I came to find in the Bible God's word that God is eager to save me. He delights in my happiness. Amen. In fact, religious teaching, tradition even tells us that God only wants us to be joyful but not happy. Anybody ever heard that? Yeah, God wants you to be joyful but not happy. He's not required to make you happy, but to be joyful. And that, that, that confused me because I understand and understood in my own thinking that happiness was within joy. Amen. Happiness and joy are not opposed to each other. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God wants you to be happy. Now, you may not be happy all the time or happy about everything, but he does want you to be happy. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Yes, according to theology and in the Bible, whether I'm happy or not, I'm always joyful. But happiness, joy, joyfulness, is not opposed to happiness. Do you understand that? Yes. There are some things that I may not, you may not be happy about. If somebody lost their job, they are not happy, are they? No. But they still have the joy of the Lord, which is their strength. Yes. Amen. Amen. But what I'm teaching you today is that joy is not opposed to happiness. God does want you to be happy. In the scriptures, the word blessed also means happy. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you didn't know it, write it down or tweet it. Praise God. The word blessed also means what? Happy. Amen. To be blessed means also to be happy. Happiness is a component of blessing. Amen. Amen. All right, Isaiah 53. Let the scriptures talk. Praise the Lord. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Who has not believed it? Don't answer. I'm just reading a scripture. It's Isaiah 53, verse 1. <laughs> Who has believed our report? I'm joining the prophets today to report to you that God is eager to save, to heal, to deliver. You tell him a problem, he says, oh, I'll help you with it. I want to lay this foundation so that when you read, for example, you read the, the, uh, the, the, the Gospels, the Gospel of Matthew, Luke, Mark, and John, that you would look for Jesus' eagerness to help people. Look for that. You can do a study of it. Just read it through the Gospels looking for Jesus' eagerness, not reluctance. You will not see Jesus in his ministry being reluctant to help. He's eager to help. Master, my servant is at home, paralyzed and tormented by whatever spirit made him paralyzed. In this case, it was a spirit that had done it. It was not an accident. He wasn't paralyzed because he had a car accident. But a spirit had immobilized that man. That happens according to scripture. 
there's some problems that are caused by spirits. There's some problems that is just some mechanical thing, some physical thing. You know, somebody just fell and they couldn't walk. That's a different thing. Than when a spirit, a demon, made them that way. Because in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, Jesus Christ cast out a demon you know, that had bound a woman and she was set free. Amen? Amen. How many have heard about T.D. Jakes? Brother Jakes? I, how many have heard the statement that she likes to, make, to, to say, you know, woman thou art loosed? Yes. Okay. Woman thou art loosed is based on what I just told you. Jesus Christ actually delivered, released a woman from a spirit that had bound her up. Yeah. And in the woman's story, her case, it says Satan had bound her. So Jesus did not heal her by praying for her healing. Jesus healed her by praying for her deliverance. Amen. Are you learning the difference? Yeah. All right. If somebody is sick because they need to be healed, you pray for healing, they get healed. But if somebody is sick because they are bound by a demon, you don't pray for healing. You cast out the demon. Amen. That's the root. When the root is uprooted, mm -hmm. the person will be released. Amen. Do you get it? Yeah. Amen. I mean, how is it that somebody becomes crippled in their mother's womb? How? Somebody was crippled. In Acts chapter 3 in the Bible, they were crippled in their mother's womb. And something just attacked him even before he started life. Yeah, he wasn't playing football and got injured. A demon said, you, you are my target, and you're going nowhere. And back then, you know, I mean, this is not today. You know, they didn't have wheelchairs. You have technology helping you. you. Couldn't talk through a computer screen. Nothing. Back then, if you were crippled, you'd be a beggar. You know how hard it is today, even today, for a single mother to raise children. Today, imagine back then being a single person. It wasn't easy. But God was always there helping people, Amen. delivering people. And I want you to be a people who expect good to come to you. Amen. And know that God is eager to come to your aid. Praise the Lord. So look for that in the Gospels. Jesus Christ, you know, this, this man comes to Jesus and says, my servant is at home, sick paralyzed and he's tormented and Jesus says I'll come to your house and heal him it was actually the man who said Lord you don't need to come to my house look at Jesus' eagerness I'm supporting what I'm presenting to you with scripture I haven't turned to it but I've told you where it is in Matthew 8 Jesus said oh I'll come to your house and the man says no 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 sir you, no you're too big to come to my house I'm a soldier. Caesar won't come to my house, and you are bigger than Caesar. Uh, amen. I'm a soldier. I command only 100 people. I'm a centurion. Century, 100. I command 100 people. There's no way. I'm not a general. Caesar will never come to my house, and you are bigger than Caesar. Please, please, sir, no. Just speak your word only, and my servant shall be. But look at Jesus' attitude. I don't want you to just rush through the story and miss this point. Jesus said, I will come. Praise God. The last time I taught here, I think three weeks ago, I taught something, brought out how uh, Jesus, in the same Matthew 8, Jesus comes down the mountain and a leper meets him. And the leper says, Master, if it is your will, you can heal me. And right away, Jesus says, I will. Amen. He is eager to help you. Praise God. 
don't be like me as a little boy thinking about God with a you know bearded old man angry not bearded angry he's an angry bearded old man with a long stick and he has this giant book that he's just writing down where I'm messing up we got to know God yeah. got to know God There are many false brothers, false prophets, false pastors who have put people in bondage because they've made them afraid of God. God loves you and is eager to come to your aid. Hallelujah. In Zephaniah, he says, I rejoice over you with singing. The day I saw that scripture, I was like, what? God sings? I thought it was only Michael Jackson who sings. God sings? Yes. If you make me sing, then he sings. Mm -hmm. Like Moses said to God, I can't talk. God said, I made a mouth and you're telling me you can't talk? If God made you to sing, believe me, he can sing. Amen. <laughs> he says, I will rejoice over you with singing. Mm -hmm. that, that's not somebody who doesn't like you. <laughs> That's somebody who like, woo, <laughs> hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise God. It's like, you know, me and my wife now, the kids have left home. We have only one who is home, but we never see him. <laughs> you know, I mean, young adult has his life. We never see him. So whenever the, the front door opens, and I know his name. Something will happen, and he's like, I, I find myself just smiling by myself. Like, oh, he's here, and I just shout, "Come in!" <laughs> Imagine that—a mm -hmm. father. I am a father. If I can have that emotion, that feeling, and mind you, I am imperfect. Mind you, I am human. See, some of you, some of you. You don't check the scriptures carefully. Because everything anybody says, you just accept. You think you're God. You're not God. Amen. All those kind of teachings we were told, you are God. You are not God. Amen. You are a human being. Amen. God is God. Oh. You and I, we are human. Amen. God never needed to be saved. You needed to be <laughs> saved. Yes. Praise God. So in the scripture when it says ye are gods, the word that is used in the context is you are still created lower than God. Amen. He says you are like in the class of angels. You're human, but you have power like angels in that class. But angels were created lower than God. Mm -hmm. Amen. So don't let people, you have to study this book for yourself. Amen. Just because you read and it says, and I said, I said you are God's. But when you're studying, it says, if I, who gave you the word, called you God's, what does it make me? Come on, this is just some problem. I gave you the word. And in the word, I called you God's. If I gave you the word, you didn't give me the word. You don't know anything about the word. I gave you the word, and I called you God's. What, the, what do you think it makes me? No, no, no. I called you gods. If I called you a god, all right, let's follow the math. I gave it to you, so I'm higher than you. Right? The less is blessed by the greater. If God is the one who blessed you, God is greater than you. Amen. Yes? yes? I gave you the word, and I called you gods. So if I'm greater than you because I give you the word and I call you gods, then in the context, what does it make me? If I call you God, you call me what? A greater God. Praise God. It's like me, uh, Reverend Janice, you know, Pastor Joe, Bishop, we are shepherds. You know, pastors, you know. In the Bible, if you wanted to give us a name, that's not, like well, if you wanted to give us a Bible name, you call us shepherds. 
Jesus is called the chief shepherd. Mm -hmm. Jesus is called the bishop and the shepherd of our souls. He's called the great shepherd of the flock. This is all in the Bible. Hebrews 13, 20. Pastor Joe taught that last week. I heard it. I was listening. Amen. Amen. Yes, I think it was his last, last scripture. Praise God. I watched also when I read Genesis teach. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I was shouting. I was like, why are they not shouting? <laughs> okay, I'm by myself, so I can shout all I want. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, so Hallelujah. if God says that you are God's, that makes him almighty God. Yes. We good now? Yes. Praise God. So if I am on vacation, or oh, I'm away on a mission. Don't you ever stand here and teach and tell the people that they are God. Human beings aren't God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right. Or if we have a home fellowship group, don't go and be teaching the people that they are God. You are not God. Amen. We are human beings who have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And even after salvation, we still sin. I know some of you don't believe that, but that's okay, because you are lying anyway. <laughs> are you still here? You still love me? I love you. Amen. Praise God. You see, God never had a problem with loving him. In the moment, you were like, we don't know if we should love pastor. But God always loves. Amen. Amen. So right that God tells you he is God and you are not. Amen. Amen? Amen. You got something? Yeah. Okay, well, Isaiah 53. So have you believed this report? Yes. Verse 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Oh, I love that. I could just say that. The arm of the Lord is revealed. Look at it. He says, the arm of the Lord means his mighty power. God will show his mighty power in your life. He will show himself strong in your behalf. God, he will show up. God will show up. Ooh, hallelujah. In the scripture, he says, I will thrust out the enemy before my people and I'll tell my children, destroy them. And he sits back and he says, go on, boys, go on, do it. Yes. He gave us his name. And he said, go into the whole world. In my name, cast out demons. And he sits back and he says, do it. And you do it. He says, yes, that's my job. I'm proving in scripture. In Luke 10, he gave the disciples. These were not even the, the 12 apostles. These were 70 disciples. So for those of you who have been told that you have to be an apostle before you can cast out demons, that was not the 12. In Luke chapter 10, it was the 70 disciples. Gave them the authority of the name Jesus. And they went out and cast out demons with the name of Jesus. In fact, when they were going out, they did not know that demons would be subject to them. Come on, are you with me? Amen. All right, so that also means that those who have deliverance ministries who tell you, who scare you that, you know, you got to be like the spiritual giant before you can cast out demons. All those things are bogus. <laughs> yes. What is sad is that you have, they have thousands and thousands of people following them. And we think that when you see those numbers, you think that's success. No, if you're doing something that is not based on scripture, you can have the whole world following you. You are wrong. You understanding me? Mm -hmm. Are you learning something? Yes. You have to know this word, the word of God for yourself. Yes. If it does not agree with the Bible, don't go by it. Amen. 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 God loves you. God is on a mission to bless you exceedingly, abundantly, and put you on a mission to be a blessing to others. Praise God. Now, if you're on a mission to be a blessing to others, that means you are overloaded with blessings. Amen. When I turn to my right, I see blessings follow. When I turn to my left, I see blessings follow. You have something to be able to give to humanity. Amen. Believe it. Yes. No, I do my Lawrence. Believe it. Believe it. Yeah, you got to believe that. <laughs> Praise God. Jesus, so in Luke 10, I just tell the story. He gives 70 disciples authority 
to cast out demons, to heal the sick. You know, he tells them all the things that need. You want. Ah, let's go look at it. Let's go look at it. Come, Luke 10. Let's go, please. Luke 10. Because sometimes we make that mistake of assuming everybody knows, and it's not fair to those who are starting out. So Luke 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 also. You see what we got the 70? Everybody, please. We go? Okay, we got it. And he sent them two and two before his face. So there's a, lesson, there's a lesson there. You know, it helps to go, you know, as a couple. Go in twos, you know. Don't be a lone ranger. Mm -hmm. Even the lone ranger had a sidekick, right? What was his name? Oh, Aha, you need a tonto. Okay. <laughs> and he, said, he sent them two by two before his face into every city and place. Come on, watch this. He sent them into every city and place. Read the last part. Where he himself would come. Whoa. I even see something about his eagerness there. He's going to come into this city, but he sends an advanced team. Amen. He wants to really, really make sure that people will be blessed out of their socks. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Sends them out. Come on, boys, go do it. Mm -hmm. And tell them, I'm coming. The master is coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You see this? I see his eagerness. I see, I see, I see it. Every city and place where he would come. It's not just one place. Do you all see this? Yeah. It's just, it's like he wants, he goes here, you know, yeah, he goes to, uh, is, that, is that a city called Blazersburg? Yes. yes. I don't know why it came to my mind, you know, but maybe there's a breakthrough coming there. Yeah. So he goes to Blazersburg yeah. and he helps the people there. And then he says, I'm going to Fort Washington. And he helps the people there. And then he says, I'm going to Clinton. Some everybody says, yeah. Clinton! Yeah. Yes! Amen. Every city and place. Come on, saints. Do you see what I see? Amen. Let me give you another scripture. Let me, let me come to Mark. I'm coming, I promise you, I'm coming right back to Luke 9. I mean Luke 10. But come to Mark chapter 1. I just want you to see his eagerness in going to all these places. Mark 1. Media team, look, get, look for verse 38. Let me see what that says. Yes, yes, I like that. Let me show you his eagerness, how I see this. Look at this. And he said, Mark, Mark 1, 38, and he said unto them, let us go into the next towns. All right, so I've done Clayton, but I see Bladen's Bay. Amen. Let us go into. Let's go home. I mean, that doesn't sound like somebody who does not care about the people in the next towns. Mm -hmm. That's like somebody who just can't wait to, you know, like, like a child waiting for Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. You ever seen that? Mm -hmm. Oh. Or you take your kids, you drive all these hours to go on vacation, and you get there. I don't know if this ever happened to you. Mm -hmm. And the parents have driven all these hours, and you're tired. And you get there, and you want to relax. And the moment you get there, the kids get out of their clothes. I mean, the place is quiet for a second, you know. And then you see them, and they're in their bathing suits. Let's go to the pool. And I'm like, man, I'm tired. Has it ever happened to anybody notice this? Kids are something else. They're never tired. Never. Always excited. Let's go to the pool. Let's go. And I'm like, okay, give me 30 minutes to catch my breath. <laughs> Christmas morning, oh, I, it's so wonderful. Some things now, it's a memory for me, you know, because the kids are cool. I remember they open your eyes 
to open my eyes. Get up and let this do a little thing. <laughs> Put your hands on my eyes that quick. They used to do that after all night meetings. Oh. oh. He said we we're going to IHOP. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not in the mood to hop. You can hop all by yourself. Look at Jesus. And he said unto them, let us go into the next towns that I may what? Preach, Preach there also. Amen. Also. I've done it here, but I want to do it there also. I healed this daughter today, but I want to heal you also. I gave this one a financial breakthrough yesterday, but Beverly's name has come up today also. Is Beverly here? Amen. You, 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 you see this? Are you seeing that? Just one word. I will preach there also. And look at even the last part. For therefore came I forth. This is my mission. This is my purpose. I am here to help you. Amen. Yes. Ah, yes. come on, church. Are you getting this? Let the word begin to work in you. Yes. Woo. Amen. Woo. He has come for you, my sister. He has come for you. Amen. He has come for you. Praise God. What is your history? What is your story? He has come for you. Yes. That's God. Don't let any false prophet, don't let anybody tell you that you have ancestral spirits, you are the generational curse. All those people are lies. They don't know what they're talking about. Amen. 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 If they are sincere, the sincere ones are sincerely wrong. Amen. The other day you corrected me. I used to think that those teachings are only in Africa. And you told me they're doing that here too. Yeah. They do a lot of it in Africa. They tell people, you know, you're not breaking through because you got all these ancestral spirits and generational curses. And, and so I got to do something for you. You don't got to do nothing for me. Jesus <laughs> did it all. Amen. Amen. Jesus, thank you. Praise God. Jesus paid it all. And he did. For real, he did. You think about it. If Jesus couldn't do it, can you? You you gonna do it for me? Who who do you think you are? But Jesus did it. Amen. So if, if all those people, just, just forgive me for, let me make, let me make my point. Now, you already told me they are not teaching those bad things only in Africa, they're teaching it here too. But let me just go, the things they're teaching the people in Africa, because they go, okay, the poverty here, or the hardship, or you're losing your job, and all of these things because the witches and all these family idols and family altars are speaking against you. You want to tell me the blood of Jesus Christ cannot speak against sacrifices that were made? The Bible says in Hebrews 12, the blood of Jesus speaks better things. So for whatever is calling vengeance against you, the blood of Jesus is speaking better. Please open your heart and receive. Amen. Receive. I, I Sometimes I go to places and I teach what I'm teaching you, and people call me on the side and tell me, Pastor, you don't get it. You see, you live in America. The demons there, they are not as wicked as the demons over here. You have not gone into the depths of what happens in, on Capitol Hill and in White House. You would not talk about wickedness. CIA, you can't do CIA being kind. There is no way you can do CIA and be, hello, darling. Can we have a cup of tea? No. KGB? You think KGB is sweet? No. You know, I mean, Russian intelligence, KGB. Ain't nothing sweet about that. But this our God, he is a good God. Amen. And he's on a mission 
to save you regardless of your background. What I love about God is that when he, was, when he began to reveal the gospel through humans to us, he chose people who were messed up, who were in trouble, and he changed them to give me a message that no matter what I've gone through, no matter what my history is, it cannot stop God. Amen. Do you get this, saints? God and Jesus, they started doing their own thing in the spirit realm. In Revelation 13, it says, verse 11, it says that the Lamb of God was slain from the foundation of this world. God chose us in Christ even before we were born. So they did their own stuff. But when God began to reveal salvation through humans, he always picked the person who was written off, who was messed up. I mean, their life was such that they were never going to break through. And God said, watch me, baby. Watch me. When he called Abraham and God preached the gospel to Abraham, Abraham's family Please listen, those of you who have been told that because of your family altars and family idols and, 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 and whatever it is that they did in your family, you can never break through. Listen, God called Abraham from a family that worshipped idols. Joshua 24 verses 2 and 3. He said, I called him when his father and his father's father, his family, they worshipped idols. I called him. And I blessed him. Amen. I'm here to tell you, when God blesses you, nobody can curse you. Amen. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody. Don't be afraid of God. Nobody. Nobody. If God be for you, who? Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Call me, Brian. Ooh, hallelujah. From idolatry and blessed him. Satan couldn't stop him. Amen. Satan couldn't stop him. No. Amen. The man's wife was barren. The man's wife was old. He's now old too. And God said, Watch me. <laughs> Defy the odds. I will make the barren land. Land, womb, I will make it fatter. And Sarah conceived. Amen. Amen. Sarah conceived. I've talked this before, but I'm going to loop it into today's message about seeing that God is joyful and he's eager to help you. It says that Sarah conceived, Sarah herself conceived seed to give birth to Isaac because Sarah judged God faithful. Amen. Are you judging God to be mean? Are you judging God to be against you? Or do you judge that God, you are faithful to your word. You are kind, yeah. you are gracious, you are generous. Oh God, listen, ladies and gentlemen, be like David who said, God, please, 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 don't give me over to my enemies. Mm. I would rather be in the hands of God than my enemies. Because as for my enemies, they will not spare me. But you, God, I know you. Yeah. You forgive. Yeah. You are gracious. Yeah. You are loving. So God, yeah, I messed up. <laughs> That's me. I messed up. I'm, I'm the governor of Virginia, and I messed up. You know, <laughs> God, please. <laughs> you know, I found I was complaining to my wife this morning or yesterday. I found I find this kind of weird and strange in America. You know, the governor of Virginia messed up, right? And the lieutenant governor, who is black, he's got two accusations against him. And all of a sudden, I'm not hearing anything about the governor of Virginia. No. Everybody's now going after the lieutenant. And I'm like, no. It's almost like they just don't want a black man to be governor. I said it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna preach. You came for the words. So you, well. you know, this year I've been good, right? Very I've been good. very good. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. Right or wrong, you know, 
whatever, whatever, whoever did whatever, it's still not right that two people did wrong and now they only complain about one person. Or two people allegedly did wrong, they complain about one person. People, people need to stretch it up in America, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, God loves all of us. He's blessed all of us. His grace is all on all of us. We are all created in the image and in the likeness of God. Regardless of the color of your skin. You need to get beyond the skin problem and skin barrier. You need to get beyond it. Human beings are more than the color of the house in which they live. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I, my, this side, this side supports me. Praise God. Okay. And I'm going to preach from this side so that I can get you. <laughs> Hallelujah. But am I helping you? I just, I, I may not, my, I may not script it very well or whatever. It doesn't bother me. What, what I'm interested in is today you get this, that God is on a mission, a joyful mission to bless you. Amen. Yes. He loves you. He is excited about you. Oh, yes. I mean, somebody who says, if you receive my son Jesus, I will come and live in you. Live in you. Again, I have to tell you this story. We have four kids, but one of them, come, when he was little, the boy will get onto your lap and he's, he's just, all over you, his hands are on your eyes and on your head. And he's, and I'm like, what? You want to get inside me? <laughs> you know? Because a, well, a human being can't get into another human being. You understand? <laughs> but God says, I will live in you. Amen. Woo! That is not somebody who doesn't like you. Amen. Oh, yeah. come on, people. Yeah. Come on, people. Okay, so on that note, let me tell you this, especially young people. If somebody says that they're dating you and they don't call you, they don't like you. you block, drop them. Yes. Yes. I'm a guy and I'm telling you. If you got a guy dating you, and for one week he's like, oh, baby, baby, I forgot. Baby, I got. He is a lying dog. Drop him. <laughs> he is not engaged. He's not engaged. His heart is not in I'm telling you. Please don't mess up. Amen. Drop him like a hot cake. He's a hot potato. Cake? Yeah, I think hot cake. Cold cake, whatever. Hot potato. Hot potato. Thank you. I knew it was some, some hot something. <laughs> Seriously, though, don't let him mess up your heart and your emotions and your life. Oh, baby, yeah, I got so busy, but you know, uh, well, it's not you, it's me. Really? It's been you for the past six weeks. Mm. Mm. It's always, it's not you, but it's me. No, that's just a line that says I'm not into you. Mm -hmm. I'm serious on this note, please. So he's, he's like, don't waste your time. Amen. Don't waste your time. Don't cry. Don't fast and pray. How many people are there on the world on this world? That, that man, God's gonna change your life. You, when you look back, you'll be like, why did I even waste time crying over that? <laughs> well, I won't call them any names, but you know. That situation. That situation. She's so sweet, you know, that situation. Yeah, he's a situation all right. He's a messed up situation. <laughs> you learn something from that. This is practical life. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Am I preaching well? Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, well, let me, let me teach you something. So, so Jesus is eager. Do you see his eagerness? You see this? Right, let, me, let me take you to Luke, Luke 9. I think there's another one there. I know I was in Luke 10, but let's just go to Luke 9. I want to show you something. Uh, media team, look for Luke 9, 51, I think. Let me see what that says. Luke 9. Mm, no. oh, well, let's see. Is that it? 
Yes, yes. Luke 9, 51. You tell me, please, if you see, if you see his eagerness here. Luke 9, 51. Are, are we here? Look up here. Don't worry about your Bible. Look up here, please. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. For those of who don't know, what it means is when it was time for him to be crucified so that he would die and be raised up to go to heaven, crucified for our sins, what did he do? He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. That was what I gave you a practical example. Somebody who is into you will steadfastly call you. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That, that's just it. <laughs> that's why you are always upset when we forget your birthday. Or Valent it's, when is Valentine's Day? This week. 14. Four days. <laughs> now that I've preached it, I can't forget it. <laughs> My wife here, she's yeah. in Sunday school with the children. She's here. Okay. All right, 14. What's today's day? The 10th. I kid you not. Yeah. Today, when we set up the today's uh, program, I didn't know the date. So I didn't put, you look at it, I didn't put any date on it. Because I didn't know the date. So what's today's day? The 10th. 10th. So we got four days to go, right? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Be ready Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Let's have 100 people text me on the phone. He said, Pastor, today is the day. It's chocolate day. Praise God. Okay, so look at this. He steadfastly set his face. I'm just trying to get this to you. God loves you. God wants to help you. You got a problem at work? He's eager to solve it. Talk to him. Do what? Talk to him. What problem? Yes, talk to him. God is not only interested in you on Sundays. He is a father who is interested in his children's well-being. Talk to him. Praise God. Now, let me show you this. When you talk to him, how you talk to him is important. About the, whatever it is. When you talk to him, don't tell him about the problem. Tell him what you want. Think about it this way. Think about it this way, that you are his favorite. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't waste time talking about the problem. Just tell daddy, dad, I'm your favorite. <laughs> this is what I want. Yes. Help me with this situation at work. Yes. Make it better for me. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm the lieutenant, and I'm supposed to take the place. Hallelujah. Amen. Talk to him. So just as God is eager and he's joyful, you should learn to be joyful when you pray. Yes. Did you catch it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important. Learn to be joyful when you pray. In my name, you ask the Father, and the Father will give it to you, and your joy shall be made full. Praise God. For the joy that was set ahead of him, Jesus set his face as flint, adamant. I'm going to the cross to die for these people because I love them. Amen. Hallelujah. I think, I think you got this. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. All right. Wow. Isaiah 53. <laughs> Praise God. Let's go there. There was, there was another verse that I needed to show you in Isaiah 53. I pray that you really got something good from God today. Amen, yes. So Isaiah And in verse 1, I was making the point about how the Lord reveals his arm. 
The revelation of his arm is his power. The Lord's arm is the Lord's power. His ability to perform, to do. Amen. With his hand, he will touch you. It speaks about the glory. It speaks about the anointing. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power that he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Amen. Brother Emmanuel, please come. King Emmanuel, please come. Can you bring me that oil, the bottle of oil? Bring, bring the whole thing, please. Praise. Let me teach people something. Thank you. Praise God. Now, let me show you something. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, people were anointed with oil. This is really nice. Uh, they anointed with oil. Amen? Amen. You all with me? Yes. Okay. Please stay one second. Stay. When God got ready to anoint his son Jesus, he did not use oil. Amen. Amen. All of you buying oil from men of God, stop it. Amen. Men of God selling oil to people, stop Amen. it. Amen. I'm going to clap for myself. Just think, think through this with me. God, who in the Old Testament told the people, anoint them with oil, anoint them with oil. When he got ready to anoint his son, the Messiah. The Messiah means anointed one. God did not use oil. He used the Holy Spirit. Amen. And in the Bible, we are told, John the Baptist said, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit Amen. and with fire. Amen. Please get to know the Holy Spirit yes. and Woo! start investing in oil. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. I know some people here still don't believe that. You're still going to go to the false prophets and buy oil that he bought for $2. Oh, you're going to yes. buy it for $200 yes. because he's going to tell you, shh. I got it. I feel it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really weird. The Lord help you. <laughs> and then you spill all the oil all over your house. All in the car. We get up at night to go to the bathroom and we're slipping. Because <laughs> the wife spread oil all over. Not my wife, but somebody's wife. <laughs> You know, you're hanging out in the kitchen and then you're talking, you know, and you put your hand on, on, the, on the door, you know. You're like, baby, what's this? You know, we got to call a handyman because, you know, it's like, or oh, maybe we got to get somebody to come pray because this wood is demonized. It's got to be oozing some kind of something. No, your, your, your wood is not demonized. It's your wife buying all that oil from the false prophet, putting it all over the place. Stop it. Amen. Stop it. See, we do that because we don't know that God is eager to come and help us. We are fearful. We are anxious. I got I to gotta get this. I gotta, you don't got to get nothing. He lives in you. Says, I will come and make my home in you. Greater is he who is in you than the devil or anything outside of you in the world that Jesus said, be of good cheer. Be joyful. Be happy. Be exultant. Because I have overcome the world. Yes. Hallelujah. Sister Paula, Jesus
Jesus has overcome sickness, sin, demons, witches, wizards. He has overcome. And the overcomer lives in you. And you are his favorite. If God be for you, no one can be against you. What you need, ask him and tell him the solution. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He set his face resolutely going to Jerusalem to die for them. This is a man, Jesus. He said, I'm going to go to the cross and I'm going to die. And Peter says, no, 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 you're not going to go. And he turns and looks at Peter and he says, Satan, you get me. Be gone. Now, if I'm Peter, I'm like, oh, Jesus, just call me Satan. <laughs> yeah, because you are under the influence mm -hmm. of Satan, That's right. That's who does right. not want me to die for humanity. Right. He wants humanity to think I'm against them. Right. But I want people to know I love them. I pray for you today that the grace of our Lord Jesus will be with you. Amen. The love of God will be with you. Amen. And the fellowship, the partnership, the union with the Holy Spirit will be with you. Amen. Receive it someday. Amen. In Jesus' name. Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Glory be to God. Glory, glory. So in Isaiah 53, he says in verse 1, and after that, he'll help me with verse 10. But verse 1 says, Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? This is the Old Testament prophets reported throughout the Old Testament, sprinkled throughout the Old Testament. I'm going to come and save the nations. I'm going to come and save the Gentiles. I have come not only to save the Jew, but to save the Gentile. In fact, I'm going to make the Jew and Gentile one in me, called the Church of Jesus. And I'll break down the middle wall of separation, partition, division between Jew and Gentile. I'll break it down. And in America, I will break down the division between black and white, between majority and minority. I'll break down the division between male and female, and I'll make them one. For you are all co-heirs of the grace of God. If we are married, it says husband and wife, you are heirs together of the grace of life. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Isaiah 53, verse 10. Be waiting for a while to tell you that. Verse 10. Please skip to verse 10. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Hallelujah. Verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when you shall make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed and he shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Wow. Look at the first part of the verse. Yet it pleased the Lord. Yeah, yeah. When I was a child, or a young kid growing up, and I, I learned about Jesus and all that, I used to really, really, really feel sad for Jesus that they crucified him. I remember watching uh, a movie about the crucifixion, and man, I hated those Romans mm -hmm. when they put the nails in it. Man, those people were nasty. I was like, look at me, and I cried. I cried, but I didn't get saved. <laughs> Thank you. I cried for Jesus. Should have been crying for myself. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I cried for him. I was like, look at what you're doing to him. Oh, so mean. But Jesus was like, yeah, 
I'm taking their sins. I'm taking their sicknesses. Go ahead. God says, I'm happy. It pleased the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, do you see this? I'm not making it up. He said it. This Bible is God's word. God said, I was pleased to bruise Jesus for you. If I something I even like about this, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. I like this. It was God who bruised Jesus. It was not even the Romans or the Pharisees or the Jews. Because Jesus said, nobody can take my life. You can do it. I lay it down. And because I lay it down, I pick it up again, baby. Hallelujah. Because I got the power. The box stops here with me. I'm God. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Nobody could have crucified him had God not given the permission. That's right. It was God's will and it pleased God. Look at this. The pleasure of the Lord. <laughs> the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his, his hand. hand. You got this? Yeah. Amen. Alright. Now let's go to Romans 15. I'm going to close there. And this is what we're going to do in Romans 15. I set it up today. Another time, I'll teach from it. Right? But you'll see in a moment when we go to Romans 15 what I mean. Remember, we just read from Isaiah 53, verse 10, that it pleased God to bruise Jesus. Right? Yes? And we also read from Isaiah 53, verse 1, that the prophets gave a report that Jesus will come and die for our sins. Yes? All the prophets. And Isaiah asked the question, who has believed this? Mm -hmm. You got to believe it. Mm -hmm. That it pleased God. God was joyful in reaching out to you. Amen. Amen. For this purpose came I into the world. To reveal God to humanity, Jesus said. So I must go into the next town. I'm going to German town. And from German town, I'm going to... Leesburg. And from Leesburg, I'm going to Reston. From Reston, I'm going to Silver Spring. And you know, I'm going to the next. He's eager. I mean, sometimes it's like he can't even help himself. He just loves you so much. He's like, oh, oh, Jerusalem, I'm just weeping over you. I wish you could see that today is the day of your visitation. Please, just open up so I can save you. Have you ever seen a mother or father so frustrated with a child like, baby, this, this drugs thing, this, this thing is, oh God, please baby, drugs. You understand, it's going to destroy you. You, 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 that feeling. It's something. You know, even when your baby has a cold, just a common cold. Mm -hmm. The way you feel. Because that children, when children have cold, they are so helpless. They can breathe, they're just so helpless. And you just wish you could take it and put it on yourself. Anybody ever experienced something like that? And you are human. You wish you could put it on yourself. That your baby will be free. God put it on himself. That we will be free. Amen. Himself, yes, what a love. Himself bore our sins on his own body on the cross by whose stripes we are healed. So, let me set this up. I'm going to teach the second part uh, in two weeks, three weeks, something like that. Because next week we have Reverend Janice ministry. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. And, and Pastor Joe, I'd like to hear that revelation. Do you all catch this revelation about the East, East West? I'm at home and he was talking about, I said, Pastor, go there. And he was like, oh, time is not on my side. And I was like, time, let time stand still. Because Pastor Joe, I saw something that as far as the East is from the West, so have I set you as far have I set your sins away from you? 
I was like, please go there because there's something in there for us. Amen. All right? Because it looks like the east side, he's saying it's a side of righteousness. And the west side is where you open up for sin to come. And as far as east and west never touch, so righteousness and sin never touch. Amen. You are made the righteousness yes. of God yes. in Christ. Hallelujah. And you are passed from death Hallelujah. to life. Hallelujah. Woo! Amen. Yes, engineer, engineer pastor. That was, I was like, come on, go there, go there. This is good, good stuff. Woo, hallelujah. All right, so watch this. Romans 15. I'm going to get ready to pray. Before we pray, I want, to I want to show you something. I want you to see this. It, it blew me away. Romans 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written before were written for our learning. We have learned something. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have what? Hope. Hope. This is a year of abounding in hope. Amen. So through the scriptures, you would have what? Hope. Hope is a picture of your future. The future can be the next second. It can be tomorrow. It can be five years, ten years, whatever. Hope is ahead. Faith in God's word anchors your hope today. Amen. In other words, I know that come the next second or the next day or the next year or whatever is definitely going to happen because God said it and I believe it. I have faith in his word that what he has said in his word and the picture he has painted for me will surely come to pass. I will arrive at that place. You following this? Mm -hmm. So hope is like, okay, that's my destination. Mm -hmm. I, want to, I want to fly to... Miami. All right, so when I arrive at Miami, I've, I'm at my destination. You understand this? Okay. If I have my ticket, I'm confident mm -hmm. that I'm going to get there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, having my ticket is my faith. You understand? I still haven't gone there, but once I have the ticket, I know I get on the plane, I get there. You understand this? Yes. Okay. So faith and hope are always working together. Faith is the substance of things hopeful. Faith always has to support hope. So hope is the picture of where I'm going to end up. But faith is that I have it. So it will definitely come to pass. Amen. You get this? I'm not trying to. We, we've taught this. We haven't taught it properly. We've taught people to pray to try to receive. But that's not what Jesus said. He said that when you pray, believe you have received and you have it. We are believing to receive. No. You believe you have received. Then you have it. Amen. I have received faith. I'll have it. Hope. Amen. Amen. Okay. So when you read the scriptures, the scriptures paints. The scripture paints a lot of pictures of hope. This is your end. This is what this is your end. Eventually, all of us will end up in heaven because Amen. we believe in Jesus. That's our end. But I'm sure I'll be there because I received Jesus today. Amen. You get that? Amen. Praise God. For example, let me tell this parents that the parents of the baby, Ivana, did I get the name right? Ivana? Simone. Second? Simone. Ivana. Okay, thank you. Ivana's future. It's a baby now, I want to dedicate a baby today, but the future is bright. You never have to be anxious or worried. Praise the Lord. Bright. In fact, all parents start learning something from this. Have pictures in the house. Words and pictures, like the Women's Fellowship, Pastor Beck, how you do the fishing board? Have pictures that the child sees. You know, these are targets. Amen. Amen. Where we need to go, we must see it to get there. Yep. Praise the Lord. Don't let your children get too engrossed in, 
all the horrible things and bad things seen and all the time. No, 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 no. Show the pictures, aspiration pictures. We aspire to be this. Praise God. So let's say that they're taking skiing or whatever, you know, skating, skiing, whatever, basketball, whatever they're learning. Have pictures of people who have excelled. Amen. You understand? So depending on the child's age as they're growing, have these things, words in the house, pictures in their room, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. Have those. That's the hope. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. Amen. So parents, the, your, your, your babies, and I keep telling them they got to make some more because they have the most beautiful baby girls. Oh, Lord. Anytime I say the mother says, no, pastor. <laughs> Okay, just in case you don't know, you still don't know, it's not me saying it that makes you have the children. <laughs> no, it's, it's not what I say. Uh, wow. But thank you that you have such faith in the power of your pastor's words. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Actually, yeah, I've been known to pray for people who couldn't have children and it happened. Amen. And after all, they start running away from me. They're like, Pastor, okay, I've had it. I've got my hands on the day before. Yeah, baby, because God is good. He's going to give you a miracle. Amen. All right. So we've seen the picture. The, the scriptures gives us pictures of hope. All right. But look at God's eagerness. I'm just going to show you this. These scriptures I'm going to teach another time. Look at God's eagerness. Just God wants you to get this so much. He just kept saying it. He just kept saying it. He kept saying it. Watch this. Watch this. Ooh, this is powerful. Look at this. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 8. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the Jews for the truth of God. To confirm, to confirm what? Everybody, verse 8. The promises made to the fathers. To confirm it. You see that eagerness? Yes. I'm going to do this. I'm going to confirm it. God will watch over his word to perform it. Amen. He's watching over his word to perform it. Yes. Jeremiah 1 12. He's watching over. I mean, that's somebody who's like, whoo. For unto us, unto you, a son is born, a child is given, and the government of your life shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful. His name shall be called Wonderful means miracle. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. And it says, and the zeal of the Lord shall what? Perform this. Do you see his eagerness? The zeal, the passion of the Lord. God isn't boring, baby. I know that's right. He is right. passionate. Woo! Hallelujah. Look at, look at that being who put all these nerves at the tips of your fingers. You think he's boring? Some of you are like, oh, I don't want to go to church. Mom wants me to go to church. What is it? Dad is always saying I got to read the Bible. And then, and then. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. You are missing out. He's not boring. He is not boring. He is not boring. A being who can make you feel like, <clears throat> you think he is boring? Mm -mm. No. You ever ate something that tasted so good? <laughs> and you ever got to have some more? He put those taste buds on your tongue. Yeah. You think he is boring? Yeah. You ever seen something with these eyes of yours and the vistas were so beautiful, you're like, Whoa. You think he is boring? Somebody who can paint mountains like that and flowers like that and color vibe. My God, God is not boring. God is not boring. Yes, thank you. He always has something going. So let me show you. Let me show you. Look at this. Look at God here. Just throw this to you. Verse 9. And that the Gentiles, that's the nations, the heathen, the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. Watch this. As it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing to your name. Verse 10. And again, he says, rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. Watch verse 11. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and exalt him, all ye people. Verse 12. And again. Come on, are you, are you seeing this? Yeah. And again, and again, and again. I mean, that's like, let's go, baby. Let's do this. And again, and again. 
throughout the scriptures, God keeps saying this, I'll be merciful to you. God keeps saying this, I will give you wonders and blessings that you will magnify me and you praise me. That's what he's saying. The Gentiles, the nations, verse 12. And again, Isaiah says, there shall be a root of Jesse and he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. In him shall the Gentiles trust. Again, and again, and again, trust him. Believe me, God says, just know that I'm loving, I'm eager, I'm merciful, I'm kind. Yes, yes, yes. Did you see that in a matter of what, four or five verses, he keeps, and again, and again, and again. All these reports sprinkled throughout the Old Testament. God's trying to get your attention. Yes, it was yesterday or two days ago. In the morning, I wake up and I'm just there. And all of a sudden, I start thinking about my childhood. And I thought of this. Man, I, have, I don't know if you can see it. As you grow, it kind of changes a little bit. I have a scar by my left eye. Had an accident. Hit the corner of a bed. The bed post. I still have my eyes. Amen. Oh, the blood that oozed that day. Oh, my God. I thought my eyes were gone. I still have my sight. Hallelujah. I fell from the roof of a house. Cut my tongue. You think it's falling off. You know? At my age, you still see a line on my tongue. The sky is there. My tongue is whole. I'm preaching to you. I'm good. I'm just thinking about that. I don't know where it came from. I'm just thinking, man, all that time I didn't know you. You know, and uh, sometimes I was acting crazy. Because yeah. I'm not going to tell you why, why I was on the roof of the house. Oh, no. But he was there. Amen. He was always there. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So finally, because he's shown you his eagerness, his joyfulness to help you, he wants you to do this. Verse 13, and then we pray. He says, Now, the God of hope. Has somebody's hope been stirred up today? Yes. Do you see pictures of grandeur, visions of grandeur, of glory? I'm bringing you out of the prison into your palace, Joseph. You are coming out, boy. You are coming out. I'm bringing you from the prison. Potiphar's wife lied about you, but I'm bringing you out. Even your own family, your brothers, they turn against you, but I'm bringing you out. David, your own father did not believe that you could be the anointed one. You could be king. You're just a boy watching over sheep. But I am bringing you to the palace. These are all pictures in the scriptures to give you hope. And so now, the God of hope, fill you with what? Oh. All joy. Do you see this? All joy and peace in believing, walking in the experience of faith, that you may abound in what? Hope. Through the power, not my power, but the power of the Holy Spirit. And when God says, you don't have to do it by your own power. I will fulfill the work of faith by my power. But I need something from you. I need you to have hope. Get a picture of how glorious your life is going to be in the next second, the next minute. See it. See it. Come on, young people. See a bright future. See a glorious future today. See it. God's on your side. God's going to bring you there. Parents, see it for your children. See it for your sons and daughters. See it for your spouses. See it for your wife's business. Come on. Husband, see it for your wife's business. Wife, see it for your husband's ministry. Amen. Husband, see it for your wife's ministry. Praise God. Even save children. See it for your parents. It's going to be well. It's going to be well. Come on, we're about to pray. Amen. Have you been filled with pictures of hope? Are you abounding in hope today? Yes, 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 you have to. You have to. Ladies and gentlemen, 
This part of it, it's not God's job, it's your job. That's right. That's right. How you see and how well you see, that's not God's job, it's your job. He's already provided the pictures. He said, I set it before you. Choose. Come on. Come on. Can you choose? Choose life. Can you choose something good? Amen. So what do you see today? Now I know your name is Jackie. But let's say that your name is Jeremiah. He says, Jeremiah, what do you see? Jeremiah says, Lord, I see the rod of an almond tree. God says, you have seen well. Yes. Why did God say that? He said, I see resurrection. That's what that represents. I see resurrection. Amen. Oh, pastor, the marriage is going down. Today, see the almond tree over your marriage. See resurrection. Amen. Pastor, my body is going down. Today, see the almond tree over your body. Strong, healthy. Come on, do you see this? Oh, hallelujah. Do you see this? God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. If you can see yourself as God has shown you, it will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. Somebody see it today. Somebody see it today. In the name of Jesus. Somebody see it. Oh, yes, there's a problem. There's a challenge. You may not be feeling well in your body. Still see yourself healed. See yourself well. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two, three weeks ago, we had terrible snow. And I went to clear the snow off of our two cars, cleared it off our driveway, cleared the neighbor's driveway, just to be neighborly. And then I was enjoying it, so I just kept clearing all the way to the mailbox. I forgot that, you know, sometimes you're overdoing it. <laughs> then my chest says, ah! you overdid it. So anyway, I had some of you praying for me, thank you. I went to the doctor, and the doctor showed me on the screen. He says, you see this green? The green is fine. You see this yellow? Yellow means there's some inflammation. You see this red? That means there's a terrible inflammation. That's you. Mm. See that red? That's, that's you. Because you don't realize that when you're shuffling like that, now he's explained to me, I don't even think about it. Your, your ribs pull up. Mm. See, when you go like that, it says your ribs pull up. When your ribs pull up, they pull the muscles in your chest. So all the muscles in my chest are now red, inflamed. They are sore. It's like you tore something. Mm. And I can see it on the computer screen, you know. Mine is red. Mm. So he gave me this medication. When I left the doctor's office, I was too weak. I was too tired to even drive to the pharmacy to get the medication. I just, I just went home. So I didn't go that day. So the next day, I said, okay, I'm gonna go the next day. Next day, I'm still, I can't, I can't go. So I texted my wife and said, you know, please pick, pick, pick up uh, the, the, from the pharmacy, the, the prescription. So she brings it after work. And then God says, you see what you kept seeing that I've touched you and I've made you well? I've done it. I was like, where did it go? I saw it. It was red yesterday. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not there. It's not there. It's just not there. And I'm telling you, muscles don't heal that way. They heal over a period of time. It's just not there. Unfortunately, you got a pastor who is like, the moment I feel good, I go do a thousand things. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> And after I'm like, okay, it really is not there. Just praise God. 
Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. This is my personal testimony. Amen. What you've seen, God will do for you. Amen. Father, thank you. Thank you for everybody. Every child, every adult. Thank you for everybody. Every parent here, thank you. Grandparents, all the things you have spoken to us of today, touched on by your spirit. Thank you. Situations, circumstances, relationships, even the dating thing, Lord, you spoke of. Heal the hearts of people, young people. Hallelujah. Let them know that they are valued by God. And so they value themselves and not run after people who discard them, disrespect them, abuse them. I pray that you be loosed today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not a struggle. Receive it. God's helping people now. Receive it. Right now. Healing has come through the word already. In the name of Jesus. And I'm praying for you to be sealed. To be settled in that place. To be confirmed in that place. You're already firm. That means you have strength. But confirmed means I come with extra strength to establish you in it. In the Bible, when people were born again, there were disciples walking with Jesus. The apostles went back to those people to confirm them. Hallelujah. You are healed. Today, be confirmed. Be established in strength, vigor, and vitality. In fact, may you overflow with strength so that you can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. You abound in hope so that you can inspire others, encourage others. I pray for your children today that they will become the influencers of their generation. They will become the people that others will aspire to be like. In the name of Jesus, receive it. Receive it. May you abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. I'm telling you, God is working now. The same God who touched my body, touched my chest. And I'm telling you, it was painful. It was painful. I told Pastor Janice to pray for me. I, I, it was painful. Mm. The doctor said, you see, green is normal. Yellow is some inflammation. Look at you. Your case is red. Do you see it? I said, I see it. So let me explain to you. And again, you have to understand that you are no longer 20 years old. When people are getting old, growing up, then he said older. I refuse to accept that. I said I'm in my youth. But he explained, he said when they're getting older, you have to understand, you cannot overexert like that. Because when you do that, your ribs pull up and they pull, they stretch on the muscles. That's what you did and you hurt yourself. Look, look at this, look at God. Look at God. He just took it away just like that. Yeah. I was too weak to go to the pharmacy to get my medication. The next day, by evening, my wife brought it home. And God had taken it away. Yeah. God had taken it. I remember telling her, I don't feel that, that pain in my chest. And Saturday, fine. And today, glory be to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you praise. He said to that woman, woman, you are loosed. And immediately she was set free. I pray for people who are bound, young people. It doesn't matter who they are in relationships. Lord, set people free. And let love come to them. Let love come to them. I pray the right people across the pathway of God's people. In the name of Jesus, I pray for godly relationships. I pray for fruitfulness in your life. In every area of your life, spirit, soul, and body, your career, your job, your career, your work situation, I pray that the hand of God will come upon your work situation. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you will walk as the head and not the tail. You will operate above and not beneath. In Jesus' name, nothing will stop you. 
sexism, racism cannot stop you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, spirits of racism, spirits of sexism, bigotry, whatever is coming against you, you are being bullied in school or bullied at work, whatever is going against you, I break the power of the devil in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray that what you have seen, that picture, that hope that you've seen from God's word, that our mentry will become your portion in Jesus' name. Receive the breakthrough. Receive the breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus. Can we please lift our hands? Lifting your hand is an extension of lifting your heart. It's just a sign that in my heart, I'm, I'm lifting my hands to you, Lord. Abraham said, I lift up my hands to God that I will not look to man or take from man, but I'll look to God and receive from God because God is the one who will bless me. So what you've done now is you've opened up to God and you're saying to the Lord, I receive your blessing. In your heart, please open and receive. Receive. Receive right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Whatever you need from the Lord, you receive right now. He's on a mission to save you, to heal you, to deliver you, to bless you and make you a blessing. He went on that mission to Abraham and he blessed him to be a blessing. Now you receive, you receive with the hands lifted up to God. I pray that the Lord bless the works of your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As the Lord blessed Abraham when he raised his hand to God. May the Lord bless you and make you a blessing. May you overflow. May you overflow. May you overflow. I feel it. It's happening. Kamasatayanda. Yekabasaya. The power of God is doing it. The power of God is doing it. In the name of Jesus. The same power that came upon my chest and healed my chest in a moment of time. That same power is here. God is alive. You know that. God is not dead. He is alive. In the name of Jesus, he helps you now. He saves you now. He helps with that family situation. In the name of Jesus. At this time, we are all praying to God. So you don't have to listen to me. Because we are all praying to God. We are all praying to God. Whatever it is you need from the Lord. Salvation from sin. You say, Lord, I receive that. Salvation from sickness. You say, Lord, I receive that. Salvation from poverty or debt or indebtedness. Financial struggle. You say, Lord, I receive that. I receive that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That's right. Just pray. That's it. That's it. Now one more thing. You pray with joy. Receive it. Look at the joy set ahead of you. He has prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Look at that and begin to laugh and smile. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I am the head. I am above. I am healed. I am saved. I am sanctified. I am justified. I am glorified. Yes, you are. You are washed. You are sanctified, you are justified, and you are glorified in the name of Jesus. You are blessed. Manda Bakaya, Elebrecaso de Loresu, Icabarando Zebeto, E Parasunte Behea, in the name of Jesus. Yes, we are all praying. So you can pray in any language, you can pray in tongues. Don't let it bother you that I'm praying in tongues because we are all praying. We are all praying to God, and God understands. He does not need an interpretation. In the name of Jesus, you pray, I pray, we all pray. Makasa Talebrentos, Ikabata Kalibirieto Robo Sandaya. In the name of Jesus. Now I like the parents pray for the beautiful pictures for your children. Especially Cornell, Mr. Hamilton, Mrs. Hamilton, especially you and your friends. Pray for your baby today. Pray for your babies. Pray. Pray for the beautiful things that you see for them. It's happening. The anointing is here now. Woo! Woo! 
feel the power of God here. Oh my God. Makasatayaya. Ili mikasatalababa. Ili antalabakasatarabakataya. In the name of Jesus. Says the Lord. You don't need man. You have me. My power is on you. My glory is on you. My presence is on you. And I am with you. What you've asked me for, I have done it. So praise me and thank me. Because I have done it for you. Says the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give him praise and thanks. Let's do that. Yes, let's do that. Yes. Thank him. Thank him. Let's thank the Lord together. Hallelujah. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. When somebody does something good for you, you want to say thank you. So thank him. Thank him. Yeah, it's, it's good to do that. You express gratitude to the Lord, to you, Lord. Hallelujah. feel like it's a good place and a good time to dedicate the baby. Just the unction is here, the anointing is here.